Good evening! I am Dr. Monty Martin, and welcome to the Untold Tales of Drakenheim. This is a special 5th edition stream where I am joined by some very good friends of mine. I'm Kelly McLaughlin. Um, play, uh, well, we'll do who we're playing and all of that, the character stuff yeah. in a second, right? Yeah, so I'm Kelly McLaughlin. I'm one of the Dungeon Dudes, and uh, we're joined today by uh, some incredible fellow players. I'm Jill Donitis. Oh, I'm Jenny D. Sorry, I was waiting for a second sentence. I didn't have a second sentence either, so I'm really glad you didn't have one. <laughs> I'm myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, we are joined by our our seasoned regular Jill and our new friend Jenny D, uh, who um, you can find all of her amazing content also on YouTube and uh, Twitter. All those great links will be in the description be below. She makes great video content on on YouTube uh, as well, and so I feel like this is an uh, a long awaited collaboration to play D and D together and just have fun and unwind as we try out some of our new subclasses that Kelly and I have written for Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim. So, bit of a disclaimer this evening: this is a playtest game. We are going to get the rules wrong. We are going to mess things up. We are playing level 12 characters with a playtest subclass. That means there's going to be some sort of confusion at some time because there's a lot of new abilities being learned and these are new things that we haven't seen before. So to all of you following along, we would love to hear your feedback. Just please remember this is a playtest state and we are looking we're looking to quash those bugs. We're looking to solve those problems. We're looking to find those things that might be too good, might not be good enough. So we welcome your feedback. We're going to be thinking about this too as well as we play through this. But we're also going to have a really fine time tonight because these three have made some incredible characters. Before we introduce them, though, I shall set the scene for you all. In the mist-shrouded... Elvenmire wetlands in the southwestern reaches, uh, the, the sorry, yes, the western reaches of Westmar. Not far from the sinking and decrepit Castle Sodden, three figures peer down onto the battlements of the castle, its moss covered walls rising up out of a swampy lake two bridges leading into the four towered the, the four towered castle with these big bastion towers on each corner in a roughly rectangular shape with two towers on the opposite walls soldiers patrol the battlements their arms crossed and their crossbows at their sides as a winged beast roosts upon one of the towers our three figures look out from the forest the the swampy forest towards the castle the words that they received from a desperate friend through a sending spell only recently was still in your minds these words were Von Fritz nabbed me. Violet, violet tendencies, purple prose, orange crush, castle sodden dungeon, execution, three days, Duke coming personally, no word from Big Red, help, hurry. That message was two days ago. For our three members of the Octonwald Irregulars. A sorry sight, these three, from a glorious regiment of over a hundred soldiers. Three last desperate members are here to make sure that those captive are not left behind. Who are they? Who would have received the sending spell from Green Thumbs? Uh, think it would have been maybe me. Okay, because oh. uh, yeah, uh, yeah, because it was Green Thumbs who sent the the yeah. spell. Yeah. 
Um, so, okay, yeah. So I am going to be, or I'll, I'll guess I'll, yeah, sorry, I'll describe the character. Here we go. So standing at the edge of the tree line is a tall gray and white tabaxi. He stands clutching a polearm in his hands, a glaive that he carries with him, a yellow vest with a single pauldron as armor. Other than that, not wearing any armor. He has baggy black padded pants um, that help him maneuver easily, uh, wrapped feet and hands, piercing yellow eyes. And he stands looking out at the castle. This is Sin Noche. Sin Noche is better known amongst his uh, fellow irregulars as Yellow Jacket. Not only for the yellow jacket he wears, but for his quick movement on the battlefield and the fact that he stings with his glaive like a bee. I will be playing a Way of the Serpent Monk, a brand new uh, subclass from our book. And Sin Noche has taken this quest quite personally because during the time that the Irregulars were traveling around doing jobs during the Civil War of Westamar, Sin got himself into a lot of trouble during the Helig incident and was going to be left for dead, but Green Thumbs pulled him out and, and saved his life. Since then, Sin Noche has had a life debt that he felt like he owes Green Thumbs. And when the news comes in that him and some of the other members of the crew are in trouble, Sin Noche sought out any comrades that were left from the old days to hopefully save their lives. Well, with that, Jill, will you tell us about your character? Standing beside the yellow jacket is the Scarlet Fury, a half-orc, strong-looking woman who barely has a warhammer in her hand. She's that muscular and large. It seems almost tiny. She calls it her meat cleaver. Her name is Urodin Morda. And she, yes, like the rest of the uh, Octonwald Irregulars, fought in the war beside her fellow soldiers, but has since retired and owns her own bar, using her brute strength to make drinks and break up bar fights and also just be a general good patroness of folks that come in her bar. <laughs> but when she hears the call, she knows that from the moment she stopped being with the Octonwald Irregulars full time, she knew that she would at any point come to the aid of anyone who was with her. She kind of grits her teeth ready for the battle ahead. And Ginny, say, tell us about your character. Okay, so sort of hanging back from everybody else a little in the shadows of the trees, um, there is a, a sort of a shortish uh like waifish thin air genasi pale blue skin her her long white hair is very unkempt and sort of wild and like half up in a way where she maybe put it up a few days ago and just hasn't thought about it and she's wearing leather armor that she she wore you know five years back in the war but since since then it hangs a lot looser on her now and her eyes are sort of wild um she is she was sort of a a cheerful, friendly bard in the group before, and the effects of the delirium that they encountered over the course of their adventures has had a unique effect on her in the years since. And she started having horrible, doom filled dreams of the future, and it has uh, really affected her, uh, her attitude and also her class, which is the Doomsayer Bard. Yeah. Looking forward to this. Well, the three. Oh, I didn't tell you her name. Sorry. Oh, her, yeah. Uh, her code name is Blue Streak uh, for her talkative nature, but her real name is Mistral Vulcanlos. Incredible. 
Well, you three, the only three that heeded the call. Maybe the only three that are left. There's no word from the Red Huntsman. No word from the, uh, the Golden Wings. No word from any of the others that are cast far and wide across the world now since the Civil War ended. Soldiers without a war to fight, where do they go? But you know that four of your friends are still here in this castle being held captive. If you do not... The, from the scoping out that you've been able to do, you know that... Tonight, Duke Ludwig von Fritz is due to return to his castle with his honor guard to see the execution of the long-hated Ochtenwald Irregulars. A few days back, you managed to tail his forces, seeing the number of soldiers that he had. So the moment the Duke gets back, it's going to be too late at least if you want to make it out alive, because he is coming back with a much larger army than what, it, than what he used to have. But for now, his castle is guarded by a skeleton crew. Not literally, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ooh, skeletons! <laughs> uh, um, no, indeed. It seems that Ludwig von Fritz, as you look out across the battlements, you recognize the uniforms of the soldiers there. It's the Chromatic Talons, a rival mercenary outfit. Sometimes you've worked alongside them, sometimes you haven't. They're nasty. They got a chimera and a battle mage, at least last time you heard about them. The group of the soldiers a mishmash of people gathered from all over the all across the continent prowl the walls with their gear they're pretty disciplined but they don't but their typical recruit doesn't have near the ex, nearly the experience as one of the, the three of you they're guarding the castle though and somewhere beneath this castle in those dungeons are your friends so with that let's take a look at the uh, the map of uh, of Castle Sodden, so that the three of you can plan how you're going to tackle this. So I will start this by saying you may come from any direction you wish. You are hundreds of feet. You, you there's a, a good distance of water that surrounds the castle, so you can um, decide what direction your characters would like to approach from or how you'd like to get in here. You can see the patrolling soldiers around because there's only two bridges that lead into the castle proper. The rest, it is a swampy lake that is green, murky, and smells a little bit of a combination of mud and something rather sweet. Like that, that there's that brief period when a decaying plant smells kind of sweet that's what the water smells like um and so the the castle walls rise directly up out of the water except for the two areas by the southern gate and the northern gate the south is where the main gate is and then there's a smaller postern gate to the north um having done your perimeter you can see the forces that are assembled here along with the large chimera that is chained to the, the top of the postern gate tower um, with a few of the soldiers of the chromatic talons giving the beast a wide berth. What will you do? My friends... Who's usually in the lead here? I think it was uh, Big Red, but she did not come. So it is up to the three of us. A bit. It's a shame. I thought she would have been here. I'm surprised any of us have lived. <laughs> you are. Uh, is this one of your elaborate jokes that you used to tell? Oh, 
Yes. Life is an elaborate joke, isn't it? I suppose. Uh, but nobody's laughing. When people tell jokes, I guess it is funny. <laughs> but right now I'm... Uh, we need to get in there. I'm, I'm raging to just smash these guys. Can't believe they're helping round up our friends. It is important that we find a way to save our friends, but alerting the entire castle at once, do we think the three of us could take them? I have my doubts, but also I'm pretty sure I could take most of them. I had a dark vision before coming here of the doom that awaited our friends should I not come to aid everyone, but I'm still not convinced that we'll be able to do anything. But I do think we should probably not invite the attention of everyone on the way in. Hmm. Well, they have the north entrance and the south entrance. Uh, did we gain any intel by chance on perhaps alternate entrances? Uh, mm. did, did we gain any intel? Do we know anything about this castle or did we just right, come here? All right. Well, let's see how lucky you are. Each of you can roll me a d6 and tell me what you get. <laughs> Three. Uh, six. One. Okay. Well, a little bit of good fortune, a little bit of bad fortune. The first bit of good fortune is that you heard only from talking around that the two towers at the sides in the middle of the walls both connect to the understructure of the castle where the dungeons are so either of those towers once you're inside will eventually lead to the dungeon somehow um but you'd need to go through the buildings on the main in, inside to get in there um however no sooner do you say this than you see another figure step out onto the southern tower. The figure is a dragonborn woman, and as she comes out wearing her, uh, this light half-plate armor and carrying a great axe, she lets her wings unfurl. I think it's possible that we should try and get in the gates silently. Otherwise, we will quickly be eaten by a chimera or something equally horrific awaits us. Do we yes. have any way of getting in unseen or climbing the walls? We could swim, but I don't know if Sin likes the water. <laughs> I left my cloak of the manta ray at home. I, in retrospect, it probably would have been a good thing to bring to the swamp, but instead I brought these sneaky shoes of mine, which would probably serve better on land or when there's lots of places to hide, which is not in a castle in the middle of a watery hole. Um, I can swim if need be. Jenny, what, what, what you got? So I was going to ask, how, how far, how long is each bridge? How long is end? each bridge? 50 feet to the, oh. to the, to the ed edge of the water. Um, and as you look about, give me a perception check. 14. You do notice that underneath the bridge at least on the southern side, there is a sewer drain. Well, we could take the sewers. I was going to suggest Dimension Door, but that would be so easy. And sewers, they might be, you know, smellier and, and worse. So maybe <laughs> we should do that. <laughs> I, I do believe that if we can refrain from charging straight in and using loud spells and other such attention drawing options, perhaps it would be better. I 
have been in smellier sewers before. I can handle it again. You know, they have a common saying in my bar when it comes to uh, drinks down the hatch. (laughs) Excellent. Uh, So we will uh, enter the castle through the sewers and in all likelihood, we will never have to leave the castle due to being dead. So we'll do them once and and then, and that'll be it. I'm sorry. I, you, you used to play songs and sing of our victories and glory. And I can play a song. I get out my hand drum and I just start beating like a very ominous rhythm. (laughs) You your sense of humor has shifted slightly in the years since we last worked together. Uh, I find this dry humor much less appealing. I don't know. Well, I, I feel this rhythm. I'm, ins- I'm inspired. Oh, she's dancing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, maybe it's just me then. So, <laughs> it, it sounds like there have been three ideas proposed for so far uh the idea of using dimension door to teleport inside the idea of charging in the front gates and the idea of taking the sewers given those those what do each of you say i think the sewers is probably our best bet i suppose the sewers yes okay the swimming under the water from the water's edge towards the sewers without without getting getting noticed will be a little bit of a challenge first you'll need to slip into the water from the water's edge undetected then stay under the water surface and not disturb the water surface as you swim to the sewers and then wherever those sewers lead who knows from there so there'll be a bit of breath holding bit of swimming bit of stealth now, I'm assuming that as a monk, if I just run on top of the water, I'm going to be visible to everybody, correct? Um, what? Well, um, give me a nature perception or survival check, whichever is highest for you. That'll be perception. That'll be 18. Okay. Examining the water and examining the castle... The defensive structure of the castle is meant that anyone that's swimming on the water surface would be instantly seen by the defenders of the castle. But given the amount of algae, the amount of dirt in the water, if you were even a few inches below the water surface, you would not, it would be very hard to see you swimming underwater. So nothing can break the water surface without being seen. Um... Unless you didn't control your swimming well enough to stay deep enough underwater. Ginny, did you have something you want to say? Uh, no, only that I, uh, I can cast pass without a trace so that when we're swimming, we're less likely to be mm. visible while swimming. Fair. Okay. Um, my, my question is, uh, in the swampy water, are there, is it like pretty standard water is there like reeds and plant life there 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 are reeds and plant life and pass without trace would be extremely useful in that respect uh because it would allow you to move without disturbing such natural life that is in the water can we, we make all... natural straws <laughs> yeah you okay we were going the same direction okay yeah. you want to make you want to make natural straws okay uh if you would like to make some straws to help you breathe underwater absolutely um each of you can fashion your own straw and i will have you either make um if you're proficient with artisan's tools you can make give a check with artisan tools uh applying um your intelligence or if you're not proficient with artisan's tools uh, or tools of some kind, you can give me survival. I have the racial trait unending breath. I can hold my breath indefinitely. Okay. So I will leave the straws to the to those filthy breathers. Okay. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Goodness. I got a 19 on my uh, survival check. Okay. I got a uh, 22. <laughs> okay. These. So that solves the water breathing problem. This is an old irregulars trick. We do this every time there's water. We sneak in using reeds. 
I'm uh, any irregular that you meet knows this trick. Okay. Well, then in that case, um, it, it, would you? Are you ready with your with your water breathing apparatus prepared? Are you all ready yeah. to dive in? I yes. cast pass without trace on us. All right. Take I, some mud and I put it on myself like camouflage. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will have each of you give me, as you enter the water, each of you can give me um, not a stealth check yet. You slip into the water and begin swimming under the surface. You feel the, the water is relatively deep, getting down maybe about 20, maybe even 30 feet deep at its deepest point. It's still a bit of a challenge to keep underneath the water's surface, though. So, as you all swim, I'll need athletics checks from each of you. <laughs> Unless you happen to have a swim speed. Eleven. Eleven. Ten. Ten. Eight. Oh. Okay, well We're that was... Good swimmers. <laughs> okay. I'm a cat, I'm not loving this. As each of you try to swim underwater, you each break you each find yourselves breaking through the surface a little bit more than you anticipated. So now I will need you to all give me stealth checks. <laughs> With a plus, plus ten. Ten? Okay. okay. Oh gosh. Uh, twenty-seven. Hold on, hold, I need to do some math here. Uh thirty-one. <laughs> 38. Wow, that's Pass Without Trace for you. Okay. Oh my god, 27! <laughs> Seeing that you're having trouble keeping out of the water's surface, the three of you find that the magic shields you as you break up just to get that last little gasp as you feel your hands or, or legs just getting above the water's surface. It's at this moment, though, that each of you realize that you're far enough out into the water that you could get under the bridge that would conceal your approach because you're now swimming underneath the bridge towards the the sewers you progress through swimming carefully the and as you do you can each roll me a perception check 18 19 16 Okay. Blue Streak and Scarlet Fury, you see this. There is, a, running along the bridge towards the middle point, a chain apparatus that seems to run up towards where the part Cullis is. And as you follow the chain with your eyes, you see that just in the murkiness of the water, there is an underwater animal pen filled with crocodiles. Uh, is it is it open? It it's not open right now. No. So they just like have a bunch of crocodiles that are just being held underneath the bridge. Yes. Um. Uh, I have a crowbar. Uh, you, you okay? We're we're on the same wavelength. This is what happens when you work together in the irregulars for so long. <laughs> but yeah, go go right ahead. I can I swim down and kind of jig the door that if the chain pulled it it wouldn't go up, or it'd be harder to go up um yes are you proficient with these tools uh no okay just improvised weapons okay <laughs> so you're you improvise uh, so putting the crowbar in place it'll it will definitely delay but not indefinitely whoever tries mm -hmm. to open this now okay I'll take it. Now, as you progress, the sewer grate is before you. It is not the widest thing, perhaps maybe two and a half, three feet wide. Yeah. There are bars across it. It is just, it, and it kind of filters up along the water's surface. Um, what you can see, though, is that the bars that go across it there is a mesh across the bars that cause the water 
that filter in to be relatively clean. Like it stops the algae and the swamp gunk from getting into whatever is draining in. This this is actually, what looking at it, this is not a sewer drain, it's an aquifer. It is providing water to the castle. Does there appear to be like a, a latch or or some sort of like mechanism to open it or is it sealed? It is not sealed. It is it is straight bars going across the top part of the the opening and then there is this this kind of this cloth filter of mesh that you could pull away that's about around the bottom half. So you could easily reach your arms through or grab the bars but your whole body is not right. going to go between the bars. Right. Okay. Do you want me to I I can I can rip it off. I could do it. Yeah, I think I think that that would be good. Okay. I rip I try to rip it off. Okay. Give me a strength check. Thirteen? Uh, Not quite enough. Roll me a D six. Uh oh. Four. Okay. You try to pull the bars haven't you stop for a moment doesn't seem like you alerted the uh the soldiers above you you can try again scarlet you're pulling at the bars try pulling at the mesh oh let me give you a let me wait i'm a bard <laughs> <laughs> i'm looking for for the information about bardic inspiration okay i'm gonna just put my hand onto your shoulder and say though death may come for us all we might make it through this door if you can pull it off and and live another few minutes. And you get a, you get one D ten inspiration die. Ooh! All right, let's <laughs> try. And I look at you and I say, "When death comes for me, I'm gonna punch him in the face." <laughs> Don't worry, I'll Our... make sure I do that for you too. Okay, <laughs> so good. Uh, Jenny, for the weight, I'm a bard line. Please have uh, inspiration <laughs> yourself. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do know my class. <laughs> <laughs> and Jill? Uh, another strength check. This is um, to, uh, 31. <laughs> you Have you ever opened a jar after really struggling with it and then you set it down and then you pick it up and that just opens yeah. this that <laughs> it just pull it's like, gonna be hard and then i'm just like it just pops right off <laughs> awesome okay excellent we have successfully made their water disgusting oh oh and gotten away in that was part of the plan is uh if we can save our friends and ruin um uh von fritz's day then all the better yes okay well i'm not confident that i'm gonna make it down so maybe i should go first and then y'all can push me down if i get stuck uh, <laughs> yes <You're sure? laughs> i'm like three feet i'm like i'm very muscular i don't know about this <laughs> So the so the biggest of the three of us is going to go into the tiny chute first, and okay. <laughs> all right. Fortunately, I get stuck. Fortunately, I'll take the other end of my glaive and like <laughs> the <laughs> greasy swamp gunk and algae lubricate your way through this this passage. Yes. It's very gross, um, and it turns out that this that this passage ends in the well the bottom of the well cistern for the castle's water supply <laughs> okay um and so you um wash out um in the midst of a um a cylinder shaped room and so this cylinder shaped room as you look up above you there is an opening in the top of it that is the top of the well where a bucket can be lowered down to collect water from up above. But then there is a walking platform around the well sort of storage channel. So there, this, this would collect both rainwater and water from the lake and pool it all in, in here. 
you're able to clamber out and into this mu- this musty room that is quickly filling with the smell of the swamp water. Um, so it's it, the the only thing that you can surmise is that as soon as anyone comes to get any water, they're going to notice something's wrong. So better act fast. There are three narrow passages leading off of this room. One to the north, one to the south, and one to the west. So we came in, sorry, we came in the southern or north? We came in the southern gate. So you came in through the pool of water. Which, but which end of the is, castle was Yeah, that? which end The did south we come end in of the castle. Yeah. Okay. And, and yeah. how far did we feel like we traveled through the pipes to end up here? Well, from your casing, casing the castle before, you knew that the well was in the dead center of the castle courtyard. Oh. So you are in the okay. dead center of the castle now. Kind of an yeah. angle. Yeah. Mm. Well, take that, Von Fritz. I hope your next drink of water is unpleasant. That's a, that's a pretty, that's a pretty weak curse. Don't we hope worse than that for him? Well, it's a start, I suppose. Yeah, I guess I it was, can't hurt. I'm not the intimidating one here. I'm usually the pretty quiet one when it comes to intimidation. Uh, Scarlet, that's, that's, what would you say in this instance? I hope that when he drinks the water, it rips off his arms. Yes. <laughs> yes. Doesn't seem probable, but it's definitely dangerous. So who knows? <laughs> What's possible? He could explode. Maybe we put delirium in it or something. Oh, I'm imagining Sin looking like after you put like a Persian cat in a bath. And- yeah, I'm like <laughs> I'm like all like droopy and wet and <laughs> trying to look menacing and sound menacing, but it's not it's not working. No. <laughs> You're like, I hope his water's gross. Ugh. Okay. Yeah. Um, so which paths, which are the three pathways that are available to us? Um, you see a pathway to the north, a pathway to the, the, it goes to the north, but then it immediately goes to the east. One to the south, but then it also goes east. And one that goes to the west, but then it goes south. Hmm. Oh, there are God. three of us in three directions to go. <laughs> I suppose if we want to invite the inevitable end sooner, then we should indeed split up. Hello, so, Jacket. We learned in basic training that we don't don't split up unless we absolutely have to. I split up in Helig just fine until I almost died and Green Thumbs had to save my life. Right. Right. That's exactly the point. <laughs> What's it going to be then? Uh, well, so we know we're going either east or west is where we need to go if we're trying to get to one of those towers. So probably uh, not the west path because that ends up going south. Mm-hmm. Agreed. Blue Streak, you have found some prophetic insight in your time since we were in the re- irregulars together. Perhaps. You can foretell which direction is best to go. I foretell that. Oh, I forgot to do my. By the way, I was supposed to do, roll a d twenty every long rest and mark that number down, and I didn't do that. So That's I'm just okay. writing that down Ooh. right now. Do you want to tell yes. the people about your cool ability? Sure. I was just review. I was like, hmm, Kelly helped write this person, so perhaps there is a real thing I should know about. Uh, yes, I have a feature, a sixth level feature called prophetic foresight, where I get to roll a d20 after a long rest, and then uh, a number of times equal to my proficiency bonus, which is four at this point. So four times throughout the day, I can use my reaction to replace a number that any any creature I can see, wait, hang on, any creature I can see within 60 feet of me makes an attack roll, ability check, or saving throw. I can use my reaction to replace the result of that d20 with the number I rolled. And I just rolled a four. So four times today, I can force somebody to roll a four. Awesome. Nice. That's it. It's not relevant in this moment, but that's the explanation. <laughs> it's still cool. And uh, yeah, I was more just, I think I may have, yeah, I wasn't poking for an actual ability. I just. Uh... <laughs> I have indeed seen the future of this world and the people in it. And it is terrible. We suffer. Mm. They're screaming. There's black smoke, pestilence. 
The, it's like we are screaming. Friday night at my bar. I don't know. <laughs> In fact, as as Blue Streak speaks, you hear a scream resound out down the halls. It's the hard halls? to tell with the act. Well, thinking. Give me a perception check, Scarlet Fury. Seventeen. Seventeen. It did not come from the passage that goes to the north and then the east. Okay. Well, that rules out. Do yeah. we want to go towards the screaming? There's a good chance the screaming is our friends. Yeah, it seems like we already had kind of ruled out the west path because the ultimate direction was not right. And now it sounds like we can rule out the north path. So maybe we should take the south path by process of elimination? I trust you, Blue Streak. That's, that seems... Did the okay. noise... It came from the north and the east? Is that what you No, saying? it didn't come it, from the it north. It didn't... It, yeah, you couldn't hear enough to rule out, to pinpoint which passage it came from, but you could hear enough to rule out that it didn't come from that direction. Okay. Yeah. So if we go south... We have a 50% chance of going towards the screen. Yellow Jacket approaches the south, uh, fueled by his companions. He, he's, he just follows whatever okay. the bard says, because the bard knows best. Well, and has always been such doomed. a Yeah. <laughs> She's always been such a cheerful person in the past uh, that I'm just going to trust her. The narrow <laughs> passage um, heads towards this... Uh, curves around and then immediately splits to the north and south, which then the other paths now immediately split again, round off to the east and the west. As you follow along, though, you notice that there is spilled water, as if a water porter has picked up water recently from the pools that leads from here, and the water, the trail that the water was taken, um, it heads down this direction over ah ah don't do that <laughs> over can see over them. this direction don't reveal. okay aha uh -huh. do we follow the water or do we not the question is i do not know if von fritz is likely to bring water to his prisoners or torture them by not mm -hmm. giving them water or torture them with water or torture them with exactly. water oh. Too many choices. Uh, it's, so wait, so so we're just deciding if we want to follow the water or not. I mean, if nothing else, the water shows that someone went that direction. So we don't know if maybe the other direction is even a path that gets used. Hmm. The one true. with the water might be more likely to be an active path that people are using. And if we find someone that has the water, we can shake them until they tell us where the prisoners are. Yeah, or rip their arms off. Or rip their arms off. I prefer shake and not stir, though. <laughs> mm. Well, as you progress on the path, um, Yellow Jacket, start to smell the smell of cooking. It smells like maybe chives or onions and maybe a little bit of mutton maybe mm. a stew being cooked us tabaxi often think with our stomachs first and uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna keep going down the path <laughs> okay. cool just follow perhaps we stop for stew before saving our friends perhaps we bring them stew okay as you turn around the corner you see a small boy, perhaps no older than 12 or 13, carrying a pair of water buckets. Um, he is dressed in common clothes and has a very unfortunate bowl cut. <laughs> and he is slightly humming to himself and walking down the hallway uh, going forward. I, I, I put up my hand and, like, stop everybody. 
and wait for him to to pass well he is um he is let me just get a token to represent so i have that pardon me i t- i turn to my other two and i'm like should i should i take him out it would be a mercy his future holds only horrors <laughs> <laughs> If you can knock him out, maybe, but I think it's not a fair fight against such a small child. Oh, is this a human child? Sorry, I they all look <laughs> all, all humans look all, about the same to me. All right. All three of you can roll me a D six. Five. Three. One. Um, as he's approaching the staircase. He trips and drops the buckets and swears and says, oh, now I'm going to have to go back and get more. The cook's going to beat me. Uh." And he uh, is starting to turn around. Run away so the child doesn't get beaten. (laughs) Oh, no, the small human is coming towards us. (laughs) Quickly. Run away. (laughs) (laughs) We... No, Can tiny, just, tiny human, back. Go the other, around the corner? Yeah. All right. You head around the corner, and <laughs> you peer around the corner as the, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the boy uh, with the bowl cut um, walks back down the hallway with his, with his buckets and sighs heavily as he goes to retrieve more water. Oh, but, but it's going to be all gross. And, and that's when you hear the words, Ew, gross! Okay, I'm gonna run. Ar- I'm gonna run Go get the around. Team. I'm gonna run around, and I am going to use. Uh, I I am going to. I would like to. Oh God! You're in there now. All right. Well, I'm gonna you- play my. I'm gonna play my pipes of haunting. <laughs> okay. Uh, tell me what the pipes of haunting do. Um, I can use a charge to play them and create an eerie spellbinding tune. And any creature that I choose within 30 feet has to make a DC 15 wisdom save or become frightened of me for one minute. That's not helpful, is it? Anyway. It's, it's helpful yep. enough. Um, well, as the strange lady walks up behind the, the 14 year old bull cut, uh, boy with the bull cut, playing the creepy flute, the... <laughs> The tune, uh, the unnerving tune fills him with a sudden sense of dread, and he turns around, drops the buckets again, uh, <laughs> and uh, um, he he screams. God uh, dang it! <laughs> um, Why can't people be frightened quietly? And um, as a, as a result of that, um, because he's frightened, he can't move any closer to you. So he has to run away from you. Uh, <laughs> Yellow jacket, go catch him! Um, I think it would be prudent for us to roll initiative, even oh, though this yeah. is just against a 14-year-old the, child. Against a tiny human. We should have just killed him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 15. 21. Also 21. Okay, oh, which of you would like uh, to go first? Ginny, would you like to go first? No, I think I've done enough damage. Okay, okay. all right. I, I'll go first then. Okay. Then, Yellow Jacket, you may act now. Um, let me just see. Uh, since I have a movement speed of 60 feet, I run. I, I, I like, cat, pounce, gal- like, gallop through the sewers, <laughs> uh, slink past Blue Streak like liquid, and turn to point my um, my glaive at the tiny human. Okay. It's at this point getting close to him that you realize he's not a tiny human. He's definitely a halfling. Oh, great. Oh. Wait, is he still a child? Or, or? Uh, n- no, j- just he... he uh, halflings may he's not an entirely... Adult, he, adult halfling. He's li- likely a... Probably still a halfling teenager, more accurately. Okay. Yeah. Um, you are not a tiny human at all. <laughs> and I, I can I non 
lethally <laughs> attack him with my glaive. Like, I imagine that I'm trying to, like, knock him over the head to knock him out. Yeah, yeah, you, you can basically, yeah, yeah, you can. Like, do I need to roll to attack, or does he just get knocked out? Basically, as long as you don't roll a 1 on the d20, I think your attack bonus is high enough to... to... Uh, yeah, I, I rolled a 19. So... Uh, yeah, so you bonk the halfling teenager over the head, um, and um, he has one hit point, so <laughs> he immediately becomes unconscious from the concussion that you give him by slapping him over the head with a melee weapon. And and then I like I like set him down against the wall, and I'm like, go to sleep. <laughs> and then I back away, and I'm like, the irregulars. Are, are always sneaky in their approach. <laughs> we should pose him like he's lazy and sleeping. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I thought. I thought perhaps if he was frightened, he would just give up on his life and and his tasks. Maybe he has, and he will wake up with no purpose. You have done well, Blue Streak. <laughs> Yes, yes. Uh, we all must go through that at some point. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hearing Scarlet's recommendation, I'm going to like sprinkle, like I, I take like a small piece of food and I put it in his hand and like sprinkle crumbs on him and I just make him look like he <laughs> went for a nap after not doing his job very well. I have a all glass right. bottle that had like, I guess from my bar, I put it in his other hand <laughs> to make it look like he's drunk or something. <laughs> look at this drunk loser not doing his work as I slink back into the sewers. <laughs> as you finish, finish oh. as you finish that, um, you hear a voice coming from the hallway, the opposite hall from from you, and a few you can hear the echo from up above of one of the soldiers muttering, I think I heard a scream. Um, and you can hear the sounds of heavy plate boots coming from this direction. And there is the sound. It's a familiar sound. You've heard it before. It's that of an ax grinding against stone like an axe a heavy axe is being dragged against stone if if the axe man wakes him up then he will tell him that he saw a blue lady and a cat attack him uh just what do we do oh god this is exactly what i expected failure <laughs> this is just like he like um do we need to knock out the axe? Should we hide? And then when the axe man comes in, we knock him over the head, put a bottle in his hand, and put him up against the wall as well. I only brought one bottle. We they will... can share. They shared the bottle, and they're they both sh lightweights. Brilliant. Uh, oh, punch the, the axe man is what we I'm just hearing. need to make sure that he doesn't scream, because then two screams, that's, then that's just that's too much. So Perhaps. smother the axe man. <laughs> who did he tell wait but he, he was saying i think i heard a scream to someone Do we have to you, knock that you, person you, too? you okay it's <laughs> worth remembering that the scream happened in the well that is in the center of the castle so the scream would have reverberated and echoed up out the oh. well and uh been hearable to anyone patrolling in the area up up above um, and so you can hear the sound, the, the sounds of, of that uh, up above, like that. I think I heard a scream. Was is is what you heard someone shouting up on the upper floor? Because it's it's enough. It's an it's close enough that you can hear. Like sound will travel down into the well and echo downwards. Um, Maybe we can intimidate the axe man into saying, "All clear." Can you mimic the? regular halfling's voice oh i i don't know maybe i mean yes i'm a good performer <laughs> good okay i can even sometimes pretend 
to be uh, an optimist, but it's very draining. There is, <laughs> there's more footsteps approaching. I'm going to try and mimic the halfling's voice. Okay. And say, but I feel like we should also drag him out so that if someone comes through, they don't see him. I feel like we shouldn't leave him in the... Oh, there's people coming from every... I mean, at this okay, point, we're I'm just... Gonna, I'm going to mimic go the halfling's voice and I'm going to say, almost slipped. All good, though. <laughs> okay. Give me a deception check. <laughs> okay. Deception. That's yep. Got it. Woo! That's a twenty-five. Okay. The stunning accuracy of your deception causes enough hesitation that when the soldiers come, you can act with surprise. Well. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here is what what you see around the corner come two members of the chromatic talons um with the sounds of an, at least another behind them and the um the one of the voices say was was that that water boy he's 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 always messing around in the well did he fall down the well again um <laughs> should have shoved him down the well then nobody would see his body <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is macabre. Uh, so the the soldiers um, they, they come around the corner and they um, see that uh, you are there. Um, so we'll keep the initiative order from before. Um, and what I will just do is, um, uh, Scarlet Fury, I'll just give you an opportunity because you didn't get a, a proper turn to just place yourself where, like, you can move where you would like to be. I will be there. Okay. In that case, you're, you're happy with that? <laughs> so um, my soldiers, uh, so we're going to go back to the top of the round, but I'm going to give um, Blue Streak surprise because you tried to dis deceive them. So what are you going to do with your surprise? Um, <clears throat> uh, I, uh, I, sorry, I'm reading range on spells. <laughs> what is it? cue to figure out how far something is? I got this. I'm figuring it out. Okay. Uh, I would like to cast suggestion. Okay. Um, oh. I guess I'll, I'll come. Like, do I have to come over here to do it? Yeah. Yeah. Be, yeah. A, per, a prisoner suggesting a creature I can see within range. Okay. I'm gonna come out here to the edge, and I'm going to cast suggestion on this guy. This this guy that's right up ahead of us. Okay. The one to the and north or south. The the wait. How do I show? How uh, do click I click and hold. Spot? Yeah, click, click and hold that yeah. guy. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and I am going to suggest um, give, give give up and turn around. <laughs> uh, he fails his wisdom saving throw. I think. <laughs> what is your DC? Uh, my oh god, where's that on here? Wait, my, my spell due to a sixteen. Yeah. Okay. So th that's going to be only a fifteen. Um, so. He says, yeah, it's lunchtime. Um, <laughs> uh, and so with his turn, he's going to turn around the other way. Unfortunately, there's a few others that are coming. Uh, so um, he, he, he's turned around and you're like, you can see him see to say to his fellow soldier, it's OK. This is lunchtime. We should we should go back. It seems all fine down here. And the other soldier's like, what are you saying? <laughs> um <laughs> And so we'll go to the top of the round then with Yellow Jacket. Uh, Yellow Jacket slinks past Blue Streak and runs south and yells, Feel my sting! And throws his glaive uh, forward. I'm going to use, okay, we're going we're gonna to use some new features here. Uh, so I run south and I am going to use two key points to adapt the black mamba stance while using this stance when you take the attack action on your turn and attack with a melee weapon you can make one additional attack as part of that action giving me three attacks instead of two um and i will just i i run forward and do like a 
three a triple jab with my glaive at a ten foot range. Okay. Towards this first uh this first fellow. Uh that's gonna be twenty six to hit. Nice. Um, there's nowhere to dodge. You're you send a thrust straight down the hallway. How much damage you got? Um, now this is where it gets fun. So, oh, I guess I didn't use great weapon master. I sh I need to remember that. Um, mm. so I get to do two d10 because I am using a magic weapon, the serpent's fang, which does an extra d10 of poison damage. Uh, so that is going to be. 14 regular damage and Ooh. two poison damage. Um, I incidentally, it's the two poison damage that makes his life slip away. <laughs> awesome. So I stab him and he, and he kind of like turns pale and sickly as he, yeah. as he slumps it, it, it's over. It's like that moment of like, I've just been stabbed, but I'm going to be fine. And then the poison hits his veins and he collapses to the ground. And uh, I, I continue down the hallway seeing this next fool and uh i'm going to attack them this time with great weapon master just because i want to i want to try out this subclass and see how much damage i can do um all right that's going to be a 14 to hit um he raises his shield um the next one is ready with his shield and blocks the blow and my third attack uh is a crit Okay, um, I don't think this this guy can survive a crit, uh, so um, tell me what happens. Um, so I, I turn the corner and jab right into his shield, and I actually stick his shield with my glaive and fling it off of him, and then he's standing there defenseless, and then I run him through. Yikes. Okay. And then, after that, I move back to stand guard with my friends okay um all right with that uh uh well blue streak we are back to you the you can tell that there's a bit of a traffic jam now happening in the hallway as the soldier that you suggested is blocking the way for other soldiers to get through <laughs> what would you like to do um hmm, well uh i i guess i'm going to well, first, I'm going to use my bonus action to inspire Scarlet Fury. Nice. By saying, though all of our fates are terrible, your fate might be the least terrible <laughs> if we're lucky. This is the best bard ever. <laughs> Turn around and like, you know me well enough that I'm like, Ugh. and it's like, it's like a thumbs up. Excellent. You have a D10 inspiration die. Uh, and then I am going to, uh, I'm going to viciously mock the, um, the guy that I already suggested. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, I had a vision that the chromatic talons were the worst. And my visions are true. <laughs> and, he's, and he fails his wisdom saving throw, and it's like, yeah, we are the worst. We can't even get to lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, wait, we're 12 levels, so that's 3d4. Of oh, oh, vicious mockery. Nice. Okay, oh, I just got two fours on my first d4 rolls. So that's eight, uh, 11, 11 11 vicious mockery damage at him. Um, yeah, I think that might have uh, demotivated him to death. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He should have just gotten lunch. He was trying. That's not fair. Um, yeah. Um, uh, shedding. Uh, um, you see him give up the ghost. If he can't get lunch, what's the point of anything? I agree. <laughs> Does he just fall over? Yeah, <laughs> just fall down. Wait, that, he just falls bar, down. Parts are great. And I just, I just nod like, yes, that was the correct response. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my turn. 
Okay. <laughs> well, there is the sound of heavy plate armored boot prints as the headsman rushes down the hallway towards the commission. Hearing the sounds of battle, this massive plate armored bugbear um, who has a helmet in the style of an execution hood and carries a, a great axe lumbers down the hallway and says, Duke's expecting me to execute four tonight. I've been getting impatient. Hmm. Well, it sounds like if we kill this guy, then part of our problem is solved. <laughs> and with that, we go to Scarlet. I hear that and I go, it's Scarlet's happy hour! And I run towards <laughs> said bugbear where I hear him down. I think I can get to here for 35. It's like 40 speed. Um, and I'm going to rage as I'm running. So the fire ignites in my eyes like the Scarlet Fury that I am. And I'm going to take my meat cleaver <laughs> and smash him in the face. We'll try. Oh, and I get. Do I add the D ten to that? Can I? You, um, you you can choose to use the D ten, um, at any time. Okay. Um, you can see what you rolled and then choose to use it. Okay. Right. So I can use it for an attack roll, though. Yes, but you can roll your D twenty and then decide whether or not you want to use your inspiration oh. on that die. Okay, okay. Yeah. That makes you sense. don't okay. you don't have to use the inspiration until you see what you've rolled, basically. Uh I'm going to use it. So I rolled a 15 and I'm going to Oh, that adds 10 to it. So 25. <laughs> um well, uh that does break through his plate armor and you needed that you needed that big bardic inspiration roll to get through this this Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, I I'm just trying to remember because I do a lot while I'm raging being a path of the um, yeah. old gods barbarian. Um, okay. So because it's like a weapon, it does a D12 because yeah. it's not light. So even though it normally would do a D8, I get a D12. And then um, and then I can gr if so if I hit him which I did, I can then grapple him as well. So I'm, and I get it. Sorry, I'm reading a bunch yeah. of stuff right now. No, that's okay. That's what we're here for. Uh, yeah, that's just part of the uh, play test. That's D12 plus eight. Uh, so 13 damage. Okay. Um, and I'm going to grapple him. Okay. And then I'm going to, as my second attack, because I'm grappling him i get advantage on it because i have grappler as a feat nice and so i'm just gonna <laughs> wail into him again hopefully uh and that's a 20 to hit that is just what you needed <laughs> to hit his 20 ac and that is 18 damage okay as you smash your hammer into this massive bugbear, he doesn't even flinch. Uh, I still am. And then I growl in his face. He, growl, he growls back. Come get some. I will. Uh, and he's gonna, and because you attacked him, he gets to use his reaction to attack you back. Uh, just a couple barbarians doing their thing. Uh, and he gets a, um, uh, with his, he attacks with his great axe, getting a 19 to hit. That hits. Okay. And I have resistance to, I'm um, assuming, slashing damage? Slashing? Because uh, you're raging? Okay. Yes. So then normally this would be 20 damage, but it goes to 10 because of your rage. Okay. Oh, were we? I forgot to ask. Were we getting any potions at the beginning? We totally. Oh yeah, you each have that. two greater healing potions. Oh sweet. Oh yeah. neat. We totally forgot that. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> as we're doing damage, we should yeah. know. Okay. Finally, the soldiers. They move in to attack. Uh, as soon as that one reaches there, 
I'm going to uh, use, oh, which one? You know what? I'll, I'll hit, I'm going to attack the one that goes up to blue streak. Um, Cause she, uh, the creature enters my 10 foot reach. I'm going to use a serpent strike. Okay. Cobra strike. So Cobra Strike, when a creature you can see moves into reach, you can use your reaction and expend one key point to make one attack against the creature using that weapon. Okay, go for it. That's going to be um, a 22 to hit. Okay. Um, you. <laughs> I, I wonder, um, Blue Streak... As this foe comes towards you, how do you respond? With resigned acceptance of my oncoming death. <laughs> so you don't even flinch as Yellow Jacket um, jabs the, the the enemy just as they're about to bring the blade right towards your neck, and then they stop suddenly as Yellow Jacket deflects the blow. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, so I'm gonna do. All right, so that's going to be nine, or let's do this one at a time. Poison damage separate. Does it matter? Should I do poison damage separate, or can uh, I no, just no, not for these okay. foes. No. So uh, that's going to be. Uh, sorry, I just lost count. Nine, nineteen. That's going to be 25 damage. It's enough to slay them as, be, before they even get up to uh, Blue Streak. But as you do so, another comes up right behind you with their yeah, weapons. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I get a 12 and a 6 to hit. It bounces off my yellow jacket. Actually, I have like one pauldron of armor that it just, he hits the pauldron okay. and it's like, come on. <laughs> there... You could have hit everywhere else. There are a few more that are coming down down the halls, though. Um, but now, with the the um, the sandwich denied soldier's body is very much blocking that passageway, and and the soldier the 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 reinforcements have to clamber over, uh, given the narrowness of the halls. So we're gonna go to the top of the round with Yellow Jacket. All right, uh, I am still maintaining my Black Mamba stance, mm -hmm. and I am going to just start attacking these these uh, guys. So the one in front of me. Let's uh, let's do that. Uh, does an eighteen hit? Uh, it just hits. Yes. Yeah. With their chainmail and shields, these guys have a very are, are well armored and protected. That's going to be thirty-two damage. <laughs> okay. And my second attack. Yeah, giving me a. Um, a weapon that adds an extra d10 of damage was uh, was good. As you dodge the two attacks that this sol soldier makes, you're able to dispatch them quickly and move on to the next foe. And at range, I just drive my glaive forward, getting a uh, 23 to hit. Nice. For... Um, 20, 20 damage. I imagine that you just skewer both of them. Yeah, I've just just <laughs> as they're running up, I throw my glaive forward through the first and into the second. <laughs> okay. And, Anything and else, like, sir? I turn and I'm like, Blue Streak, are you okay? Uh, death is oncoming for all of us, but thank you for slowing it. <laughs> you're you're welcome. <laughs> okay. With that, um, do you want to move? Uh, actually, okay. I do. I hear any more footsteps coming from the south passage? You might have a brief reprieve for for the time being. Then I move past Blue Streak to stand uh, in front of her in the northern direction. Okay, uh, and Blue Streak, it is your turn. Okay, um, I am going to come towards this scary bugbearer person because it feels like the, the more imminent threat and I don't want to leave Scarlet Fury to it alone. Uh, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use one of my features. Nice. I'm going to use dreadful word. Oh, it's a bonus action. Let me pick a real action first. Let me pick an actual action. Okay. An, act 
an actual no, well, nope, can't combine those words. Okay, uh, I I am going to cast Tasha's hideous laughter on the on the bugbear. Uh, this uh, is this is a wisdom saving throw, yeah. A yes, a wisdom save. Okay, and I'm gonna say, uh, you imagining that you have a future is hilarious. <laughs> um, I fail, but I have the indomitable trait, so I get to reroll. Womp womp. I you okay? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Re-roll. Double fail. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, he falls prone in okay. fits of laughter. Uh, he is incapacitated and unable to stand up for the duration. Have you uh, ever oh, watched a damage? Have you ever watched a Samuel Beckett play? You know, like those, they're funny, but oh, they get dark. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it, exactly. This that's is the theme Samuel of Samuel Beckett the Bard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, where does it say the damage that it did? Creature of your choice can see you almost fall into a target must have seen I, I don't think Tasha's hideous laughter does damage. Oh, each time it takes damage. That's right, sorry, yes, I was misreading. It, yeah. Uh, so anytime it takes damage and at the end of each of its turn, it can make another wisdom save. Okay, superb. Uh, anything else you'd like to do with your, your bonus action? Did you want to use the dreadful words or do you want to do something else? Well, I was gonna, but now if it, if he takes damage, then that's going to go away. So I guess uh, for my bonus action, I'm just going to give away all the bardic inspiration. Uh, uh, I would like to give another bardic inspiration to Scarlet Fury. Okay. Amazing. Um, Or I've given them both to Scarlet Fury so far, right? So I guess I'll give one to Yellow Jacket. All right. I'll, 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 I'll take it. Okay. It's a D10, right? Yes. And I, I, I'd say something inspiring, like, don't I, die yet. I hear that down the hallway, and I'm like, I do not plan to. <laughs> okay, so my scary executioner is grabbed, writhing on the floor, laughing hysterically, so I'm incapacitated, so I can't take actions, but because my speed is reduced to zero and I'm prone, he can't even stand up from prone. <laughs> I imagine Scarlet Fury just has, like, her boot on him as he's laughing hysterically. Like, it's, he's just on the ground, and she's just holding him there. So I, I can make another wisdom saving throw to try to get out of this, but I, I'm still going to be prone. Uh, yeah, because, and yeah. it's at the end of the turn too. So even if he succeeds, <laughs> and I get a natural one. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, I yeah. imagine that like the laughter that that inspires is not even really like true. It's it's sort of like the laughter that you get when you realize that like everything is just like ruined, and you just you, all you can do is laugh. That's the kind of laughter. You know the uh. laughter that you're not sure if it sounds like crying. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> okay. Is somebody Great. crying over there? <laughs> all right. Well, as the so the husband gets no turn. Good job, Bard. Uh, so, Scarlet, it is your turn, and you have a prone, laughing, scary, ex- no longer scary uh, bugbear warrior uh, next to you. What are you going to do? So, it, is prone advantage? You have advantage on attacking this guy from so many sources right now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I take my cleaver and I say, um cheers <laughs> i go at him um okay uh wow wow um no that's only a 15 <laughs> okay so fortunately he's still wearing plate armor so with all that uh it doesn't get through the gong <laughs> yeah it just yeah. resounds out I try again. Okay. Oh, oh, two twenties, two crits, <laughs> double crit. That's amazing. Okay. Um, how are we gonna do this? There we go. Is that like? So hold on. Let me do all the math. Are we doing uh, a regular? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. We can run run it as usual. Well, 
eight, so 20 plus 30 damage. 30 total? 30 total damage. Okay, so that leave actually right doesn't face. leave him bloodied yet. Despite getting smashed in the face, he is not bloodied. And I do get another saving throw you do. now because I'm damaged. At advantage because it's a damage thing. It says it, they have oh, advantage okay. on the saving throw if it's triggered by damage. Well, I needed that because I rolled a four. Um, so the advantage, I get an 18. Is okay, my- well, not with my prophetic foresight. You actually do get a four. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Just gonna keep him down as long as I can. <laughs> yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah. He's he's not gonna do too too much. Uh, I told you I saw your doom. <laughs> but did it look like this? <laughs> <laughs> that would be a pleasant dream. Okay. Well. It's a great team. Um, okay. <laughs> Good luck, Monty. Yeah, indeed. Well, what with with that, we go to the top of the round with Yellow Jacket. Um, all right, Yellow Jacket runs up to this corner and uh, throws his first attack at this uh, poor fool who's trying to uh, maneuver over the his friend who died from sadness. <laughs> okay, uh, th- that's going to be a twenty-three to hit. It is a hit. Uh, that's going to be oh boy. Okay, uh, that's uh, that's going to be thirty six damage. This is not. I rolled night. maximum damage, guys. This is not my night. <laughs> uh, I mean, my dice are are are, hot, are really hot tonight. So then I'm going to run. Okay. To here, and the head the this dude is within ten feet of me, so I can attack him. He is prone, though, so technically you would I have advantage. You would have disadvantage because uh, you would need to be adjacent to him because of your reach weapon. You need to be adjacent to him to, to, to get the, the advantage. Okay, well, can I, move, can I move to there, then? Yeah, you could move. You're, yeah. Give me yeah, an acro- right. just, just give me an acrobatics check, though. Do you accept a 19? I do, yes. All right. Well, now that I'm next to him, I take my glaive and just hold it up, and uh, my second attack um, is going to be with advantage. Uh, that's going to be a 22. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he is going to take... Um, that's going to be 17 regular damage and 6 poison damage. Okay. And I am going to use... Um, another Serpent Strike, Viper Strike, and I am going to use two more key points. Just going to blow all my key points to show off what my monk can do. And I'm going to add another eight poison damage to that. Hmm. I am now bloodied, soundly. And then I will use my third attack. Uh, That's going to be... A uh, ooh, a fourteen to hit. That will bounce off his plate armor. Well, then I am going to use another key point and take two more attacks as bonus actions, uh, missing and getting a twenty-three to hit. Okay, I did break out of the. I made another seventeen. Okay. Uh, against is, is yellow jacket the top of the round new round uh yes but your reaction, reaction will set till your, t- your, turn. your turn yeah okay. so i will get out but it will you'll actually get a chance to act before their turn neat how much more damage kelly uh that's gonna be 13 more damage with my unarmed okay. strike and lastly um I'm going to use my slasher ability because I took slasher and kind of forgot about it until right now uh, to reduce the speed of the target by 10 feet until the start of my next turn. Okay, well, he says this isn't funny anymore, but uh, Blue Streak, it is your turn. What are you going to do? 
Okay, uh, well, I'm realizing I have one one spell that deals damage because I was like, I'm not going to be the damage dealer here. And it's just vicious mockery. So I think instead, perhaps I will just try and stab him. I have a rapier. Okay, go for it. Uh, I don't necessarily know that there's anything else I could do that would be, I don't want to throw all my spell slots away. So I'm going to just go ahead and try and stab him with a rapier. Okay. Who knows if that will work? Oh, that was a very low roll. Nope. Nope. Well, I I think with with this scene, um, I am prone. Is there anything else you'd like to do? It's gonna be I don't know because it's gonna if it's not eighteen, it's gonna miss. Uh, yeah. Well, it definitely it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't hit. So okay. like I, I rolled a uh, rolled a four, so that okay. gives me an eleven. So I don't think there's how a, you like any, them fours. Hmm? Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> bad. <laughs> um. So yeah, I guess that's. I guess I don't think I have a. I, I don't want to give away my last bardic inspiration yet. So I'm just gonna you know be like, well, I had a good round last time and let it go. <laughs> okay. Well, um, though he rises to his feet, uh, he's still grappled by oh. by Scarlet. Um, sorry, I, I lied. Actually, I do want to do something with my bonus action. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you don't have to apologize that I lied to you. <laughs> I would like to use my dreadful words feature. As a bonus action, I can use one of my bardic inspirations, my last one. Okay. Choose a creature that I can see. It will take psychic damage equal to the role of my inspiration die. So it will take uh, 10 psychic damage. Okay. Nice. And then it has to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 16. I fail. <laughs> On a failed throw, the target becomes frightened of you until the start of your next turn. So I'm prone. I have disadvantage on all my attacks. I can't. I'm frightened, prone, grabbed, can't stand up. He he can desperately, as he says, this isn't funny anymore. This isn't funny anymore. And we're this all is laughing. scary. <laughs> and he, he wildly attacks with his, his great axe. Um, and unable to find purchase with any of his attacks. I think uh, he will not survive your attack, your next round of attacks, Yellow Jacket and uh, Scarlet Fury, um, having this this executioner having been horrifically mentally scarred by the magic of uh, Blue Streak, um, finds his peace in death, and that's where we'll take our break. <laughs> that's my prophecies foretold. <laughs> we prop him up next to the the halfling. <laughs> Who's who is fine, okay? Alrighty, so we will um see y'all in fifteen minutes. And we are back from our short rest. We have refilled all of our consumables and are ready to play some more D D. So as you finish beating the bugbear knight to a pulp, um, and as the life drains out of the once um imposing looking figure. Um, you notice that on his belt is a ring of keys. Uh, well, we should take them. <laughs> Go ahead. I will take the keys. Mm. They are um, slightly rusted wrought iron keys. Very much the type of, of a prison cell. All told, there are 12 keys on the ring. Well, if this was the guard, then that makes the next step a lot easier. Yes, the guard was perhaps... What did he say when he entered? He said, I have four executions tonight, but I'm growing impatient. Perhaps we should investigate the direction the guard came from. Or was the guard going towards the cells? No, I think, I think he heard the noise. Yeah, he was coming towards us, I think. Hmm. Or the screaming halfling. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> the, the halfling. Still asleep. <laughs> Who among us has not followed the screams of a halfling to our inevitable doom? <laughs> I guess all of us, so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, then... Uh, Scarlet Fury... 
Would you like to lead the way? Yes, we are going to the west. Okay. I yes. I am not great at directions. I'm normally just great at smashing things, but we'll I, go I like this way. I like follow behind you and I'm like, yes, you're going west. Like Okay, perfect. <laughs> I am the navigator, but you are the strong and sturdy uh I should not refer to you as a meat shield. That would be inappropriate. <laughs> I will protect you all from whatever comes, and as long as you tell me where to go, because directions are not my strong suit. Okay. Oh, let me see. Are we just going to barge right in? Yeah, probably stop before <laughs> going in the room. Uh, make a dexterity check for me there, uh, Scarlet. <laughs> oh, I have advantage on those. Wait, no, on a, on a d- dex check? Yeah. Yeah, just a dexterity check. like Kind of okay. like an initiative check, basically. Well, okay. As you turn around the corner, um, you see there is a large pillared hall. Perhaps that it is supporting the buildings above, like represents the, representing the basement of the great halls that are inside the castle courtyard proper. And the the pillared hall has a large table that has um, a few odd accoutrements on it. There appear to be the Uh, implements of a medical practitioner and there is a slight um man um with spectacles um rapidly gathering all the medical implements um into a bag um and as you turn around the corner he says don't kill me please don't kill me i'm just the doctor the doctor for what I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just the Duke's doctor. I was just making sure that the prisoners didn't have any diseases. Seems nice, but is, doesn't that seem doesn't that seem pointless if they're about to get executed? Can I do it? Can I do? I believe him. Give me an insight check. That is a twenty-two. He is not revealing a crucial detail. Um, And seeing your skepticism, he responds by saying, You you don't understand. The the Duke is in very poor health. He he can't risk any contact. He he wants to watch the execution. But if anyone here is sick, then he could catch a cold. And that would be very bad for him. Like like I said earlier, the fact that we let the... The water go bad will, in fact, kill the Duke. The plan is perfect. Um, I'm going to run up to him and grab him. Just to finish. Mm. Yeah. Blue Streak, this man is stalling. (gasps) Okay. I'm just going to say he's stalling so that we all know to move fast. And And I run up to him and grab him. (laughs) (laughs) Please. Please, don't don't kill me. Don't kill me. Tell us everything or she'll tear your arms out. You're the Optimal of the them. Regulars, aren't you? Yes. Your friends are in the prison right up there. Yes. He- Show me. Oh, wait. Yes. <laughs> he, he, he points uh, to the prison cells, um, which are just to the, the north of you. Um, pl- please, please, you can... You can, you can go ahead, release them. Uh, Scarlet, keep holding him. Blue Streak, you have the keys. Yes. I, I will run up to, I'll run through, wait, is this door open? This? Uh, yes, uh, that, that opens with the keys. Yes, it is, it is a, oh. a portcullis door that kind of is the, the main prison door before the cell block. I follow you, but I drag him with me because I'm like absolutely like, oh yes, yeah. we have to go. Great, that way to the prisoners. I will unlock it and go through. Okay. Well, as you go through, um, you can see that in the cells, oh, um, are um, are your allies who gasp and they say, "Blue streak, oh." We're so good. To, it's so glad to see. We're, it, uh, one of them uh, strikes. 
calls out from the cells, purple pl- pros. She's the explosive ac- expert. She waves out, Hey, let us out! I'm so glad to see you! Yes, we're here. We're here to free you so that you can live the meager, meager days of your remaining lives outside of the cell. Um, Green Thumbs, the dwarven druid, looks up to you and says, Something's changed about you, lass. You okay up there? Oh, are any of us. And then I'm going to try and unlock Violent Tendencies' door. Uh, um, Violent Tendencies, um, he's, um, he's like, hurry, unlock it. Do you have a knife? Do you have an axe? Do you have a weapon? I really gotta kill something. And And he starts shaking. Does it unlock? It does. Great. Well, I mean, I will happily hand him my dagger once. Oh, once yeah. He's out. Let's Do get have any. A- he smiles and says, let's get out of here. <laughs> I feel like we need to know what the doctor was stalling for. Like what we're waiting for. As OK. Yeah. As as she's getting them Check out of there uh, with Scarlet holding him up, I'm going to be like, you better tell us why you're stalling, or else she is going to rip the arms out of your sockets and use them to beat you to death with. I am quite able to do that. Uh, 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 I, I, I just, I, I just don't, don't want to, to cause any, any, any tr- trouble. Please, 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 don't, don't kill me. It's, it, it's just that there's, they'll be so angry. They'll be so angry that you've broken them out. Who's going to be angry, and when are they coming? And tell us everything, Doctor. Uh, I, I, I will. It's, 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 it's very important. You should, you, you should see the thing that's in, in my bag. It's very important. Oh no! This sounds like a trap. I'm, I, I'm gonna. Have I got everybody out of the cells? Um, yes, you have. I don't know how long yeah. that should take. Yeah, it's straight fast enough. Keep the keys. We're putting this guy in a cell. Ooh, good idea. I mean, that sounds fine. And, and, he, and he says, wait, 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 please, please. I I have a suggestion. Well, spit it out, Doc. No. Why don't you all just kill each other? No. And he casts mass suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> Yellow Jacket is not the most magical privy person and I also realized immediately after I said well spit it out what I had just done (laughs) (laughs) Um, you can all make wisdom saving throws against mass suggestion Um, you can um... (laughs) I already know I'm sorry I'm sorry everyone oh god 17 Um, I do believe um that um this is a bit of a stretch for mass suggestion but we're gonna roll with it i'm gonna get you guys you three can have advantage on your saving throws because this suggestion is a bit of a stretch my dispel dice has been failing me this session oh my god that one did even worse oh no 17 Uh i got a 21 and seven okay um, Green Thumbs uh, gets a 12. No. Violent Tendencies gets a oh. 2. <laughs> no, he's the scary one. I shouldn't have given him my dagger. Uh, um, Purple Pros gets a 5. And Orange Crush uh, gets a 9. Um, oh, so no. your allies are all affected by the mass suggestion. But uh, two of you aren't. <laughs> Wait, who who is? Uh, um, everyone except for Yellow Jacket and um, everyone except for Yellow Jacket and uh, Scarlet uh, Scarlet Fury. Okay, Scarlet, we need to one round this doctor and get, get make him take so much damage that he can't keep. It's a concentration spell. No, right? mass suggestion doesn't require concentration. If he dies, does it end? <laughs> Uh, no. So oh. I know I know mass suggestion because I have it. I have that spell. Yeah. Um, I if, don't, but I don't know if that would mean anything about like me understanding what's happening to me. Um, you would know. Um, that um, 
basically um the i believe you do get a saving throw um to escape the mass suggestion um because yeah if you or any of your companions damage a creature affected by the spell that spell ends for the creature so you would be able to damage each other to possibly break each other out of the spell okay which since it has since he's commanded us to attack each other like a lot of us will immediately be broken out of that if we successfully attack each other uh yes if you take damage from each other yes okay yeah great. yeah okay what a so, jerk move so let's roll for initiative 20 ah 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 also 20 oh my 10 you want to go first do you want me to go first I mean, I feel like you should go first, but I don't know if that's unfair for me to... I mean, it would help everyone, I think, if you went first. I will go first. <laughs> okay, we'll let Blue Street go first, and then the... Oh. No, uh, no, well... Oh, oh sorry, that. sorry. Scarlet. We'll let, we'll let Scarlet Fury go first, and then Blue Streak. <laughs> so, Scarlet <laughs> Fury, it is your tur turn. All right. Um, I am going to, because I still have the doctor <laughs> in my hands. Mm -hmm. Is he considered grappled because I have him? Uh, yeah, we'll say that he is considered grappled. Okay. Um, I take the doctor and I hit him across green thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> nice. Okay. So you're gonna grab him and smash him into one of your other friends. Yes. Okay. And that's an I, improvised weapon. Do I, I, like I, it. I what do I use as my hit DC? That's what I don't know. Um you just use your regular attack roll because everything for you is the the, the idea behind the um the the Path of Gods Barbarian is that everything uses the same stats for you. It doesn't oh, okay. matter what, yeah, the, the the way that we've worded it is that it's always the same bonus as whatever weapon you're using. I rolled a 24. Okay, to hit. Okay. To hit green thumbs. You hit green thumbs. And the doctor takes nine damage. Okay. Because as one of my abilities is I can treat a creature you're grappling as an improvised weapon. Um, yes. When you hit so you target. pick the doctor up, slam him into Green Thumbs, and Green Thumb. Uh, so Green Thumbs does take some damage, though. And I'm not raging okay. yet. Um, but I do. Oh, uh, sixteen damage. Sorry, okay. Green so the the imprisoned irregulars are not at full hit points. So this will actually knock Green Thumbs out. Sorry, Green Thumbs! <laughs> no, I came here specifically to save him. Yeah. But... I didn't kill him, he's just knocked out, it's fine! Okay. Um, and then I'm gonna rage as my bonus action, because I forgot to do that. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to... Uh, how far can I get? Hold on. Let me just check. I can get over. Yes, I can get over to Blue Streak. <laughs> oh, no. Blue Streak! I'm gonna knock you out of it! With a doctor. <laughs> Using the doctor, because I also want to do damage to him. Is there a doctor in the house? <laughs> okay. So then you're gonna attack Blue Streak with the doctor. 16 to hit. <laughs> Um, uh, that hits me. Okay, very good. Yes, I was just gonna ask. <laughs> okay, roll so the another, damage. Another nine damage to the doctor, and oh, you're lucky. I rolled uh, eleven damage. Okay, nice. But that will break you out because you attacked him with. The person who cast the spell, so that definitely follow fulfills the conditions to break someone out of the <laughs> mass suggestion. <laughs> Just hitting everybody with the doctor. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh my god. Look what you've done as you smack everybody with the doctor. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, undo! Undo! Okay. <laughs> this is how you undo a spell, right? <laughs> well, mean, yes. Blue Streak, it is your turn. Okay. Uh, well, I want to get the others out of it, and I know all about mass suggestions since I myself can do it. So I'm going to come right over here by Purple Pros. Wait, who's this one? That's the doctor. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to come right over here by purple pros and I am going to try and stick him. You know, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try and stick him with my rapier just gently to just wake him up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just a, a little gentle, wake up poke. A little gentle rapier poke. Uh, oh, geez. Every time I roll with an actual weapon, it's like my dice know that I'm not a weapon wielder. That's an 11. Uh, Purple Pros is able to defend herself enough to not be a hit by that attack. Doesn't wake her up. Okay. Uh, Well, I don't think I have any. I'm out of Bardic Inspirations. So I think that's it for me. Okay. Well, it is the Doctor's turn. Um, And as uh, as such, on his turn, um, he is going to... Um, oh, yes. He is going to activate his fight or flight response. Um, and as a bonus action on his turn, he can expend one of his psychic points, for he is an alienist apothecary. Oh. Um, and he gets to teleport, uh, to an unoccupied space he can see. <laughs> no! Thus getting out of the grapple. And he is going to teleport himself over here. Um, and seeing all of you all, uh, all together in one place in such a magnificent fashion, um, well, I think I'm going to have to use a very, uh, cool new spell, perhaps. So, Hmm. let's do it. Let's Let's not. Yeah, (laughs) I think, I think we, we should. But, But we've been winning so hard. Um, I think we'll have him cast. This is one of these. This this is this twelfth level uh, stat block for for CR twelve apothecary NPC that we made. Do you remember that, Kelly? He's got some nasty spells. You know, whenever I play in the play test and I'm trying out the character abilities, I'm like, this is so cool. And then Monty throws a monster, and I'm like, wait, I remember making this monster. Oh no. yeah, we gave him some eighth level spells. Why would we do that? that yeah, we gave silly. him this spell that we made called Plague Wind that summons a roiling no. wind of flesh devouring disease and excruciating blood boiling fumes that sweeps over the battlefield. Who wrote this All spell? All creatures in the it... area need to succeed on a constitution saving throw. <laughs> oh no! What was I thinking? Okay, you I know mean, what? I'm is, rewriting is the spell that? right now. It, uh, it, uh, it heals. <laughs> yeah, it's a 60 foot cube, so it hits all of you. We're con oh, con saving this? Yeah, yeah. I have a plus one to con. Dice don't fail me now. Oh, God. Oh, I rolled a nat 20. <gasps> 15. I got, I got a 15 too, so fingers crossed. Okay. Um, the save DC is... Save DC for this guy. Stop torturing us. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I've just got so many pages out. It's DC 17. I'm looking for no! 17. Okay. I got a 21. Okay. So um, so it is a total of uh, 25 poison damage and um, 19 necrotic damage. Oh my god. And it's half damage on a success. Okay. So that's 44 total. So 22 for you, Kelly. Um. Many of the Octonwald Irregulars are taken out by this. The spell leaves a lingering area, and any creature who ends their turn in the area of the spell with less than 25 hit points is killed outright and reduced to a withered skeleton. <laughs> Monty, um, wait. So who's down? Who's um, down? Green Thumbs is down. Um, but, um, Orange Crush is, Orange Crush and Purple Pros are still up, but Violent Tendencies is also, uh, Violent Tendencies is still up. So actually, all of the, everyone except for Green Thumbs was, uh, was able to survive, but Mm -hmm. they all have less than 25 hit points. 
So if they don't get out of the area of the spell by the end of their turn, they will be turned into a skeleton. And where <laughs> can you put the area on the? Yeah, I can. The skeleton. Uh, the the area is. Uh, that basically, it's a cone. So you got to get to the sides of the room. Okay. Um, I'm immune to poison. Oh, you so, are? Okay. So you would have taken a lot less damage. I'm going to give myself like 12 back. Does that sound agreeable? This definitely means the suggestion is over, Law. <laughs> Good. Okay. So, uh, Yellow Jacket. It is your turn, and you see the suffering of your allies, um, and uh, if you, you can see that if Green Thumbs isn't moved, he is going to be reduced to a puddle of ash. Uh, by the start of the Doctor's next turn? Uh, or um, by Green Thumbs' it, turn? It's by the start. It, basically, if it's his. your turn, and you end your turn in the area of the spell and have less than 25 hit points, you die. Green okay. Thumbs is unconscious, so he can't. I'm I I can't see the initiative order. So my I guess my question is, do I do I have to be the one like the, like the, irre- the order the irregulars go next? Yeah. Okay, so I have until like I have until yeah. Okay, okay. Um, I guess I'm going to run over here, mm-hmm. grab green thumbs. And then I move at half speed with him held, right? Yeah. Uh, which means, you know, I can still get him over here. And I'm, is that outside of the area of the spell? Yes, that would be outside of the area of the spell. And then I'm going to drop him next to me, behind me, okay. right here. So that would be your action for the turn, to pick him up and drag him. Um, and then I'm going to... Use my bonus action to spend a key point and take the dodge action. Okay. With that, the other irregulars um, have enough presence of mind that they are able to um, rush out of the area. Uh, but that's all they do with their turns. Like they, they're basically just stunned by the spell. Um, not stunned literally, but they use all their movement to run, uh, run out of the area as fast as they possibly can, so they don't die. Um, and so we go now uh, to Scarlet, uh, uh, Scarlet Fury. It's your turn. Okay. Seeing all of this, my eyes line up with the Doctor, and I go. Oh, you're on the rocks. And I um I imagine the, the scene of Monty Python where it's like the running, like do 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 and Scarlet Fury is just going for the doctor. And instead of using a weapon, she's just gonna body check him into the stone wall. Okay, go for it. I don't know if that counts as an unarmed strike, but yeah, yeah, sure, we'll count it. Let's do it. All right. Um 16 to hit. Uh, that is a hit, yes. And so unarmed strike is um, is a six damage. I don't even think I roll that. Uh, no, no, okay. your unarmed strike. Your is unarmed a strikes D12. are always with the path. The point of the path of the old gods barbarian is it doesn't matter what weapon you're wielding. It's always a d twelve. Always oh. a d twelve. No My body what, is a weapon. So no, ma- no matter what Ooh, you're attacking wow. with, it's always a d twelve. Out with my body as a temple, in with my body as a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> that is um, still six damage. <laughs> I rolled a but, one, and then it's plus my oh, strength. Oh, <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Took um, the scenic route, but we got there. <laughs> and then I'm going to use my second attack okay. to uh, meet Cleaver him in the face. Ugh. That is a 13 to hit. Um despite being just a mere uh mere little man, he does manage to avoid that attack. And then I'm going to as part of that attack attempt to grapple him. 
Uh, the attack has to hit for you to grapple him, but your oh, first yeah, attack right. did hit, so you are grappling him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do Do I have to attempt, or is it a grapple? That's the only thing I wasn't Basically, sure Basically, with, with the old God's Barbarian, um, if you hit somebody, you just say, I'm grappling them now. Okay. Yeah. I'm grappling them. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got him. By like the, Not quite the throat, but I've got him, like, right on the edge of his neck. All right. Um, are, do you have less than 25 hit points? No. Okay, so you don't instantly die for staying in the area of the spell. <laughs> is that where I'm at? Okay. Yeah. Okay, Blue Streak, it is your turn. All right. Is the area of the spell a magical effect? Yes. So I would like to try and dispel magic it. Go for it. It is an eighth level spell, so you only need to beat a DC uh, 18. So if I cast it at, uh, let's see, when you cast the spell using a spell slot of fourth level or higher, you automatically end the effects of the spell if the spell's level is equal to or less than the level of the spell slot you lose. So using a higher level spell slot only benefits me if it's higher than the level yeah, of the spell. Yeah, it would have to be higher than an eighth level slot. Okay, well then I guess I will go ahead and cast it at the lowest possible level, which is third. Okay. Um... And... And you should be able to add your charisma modifier and half your proficiency bonus because you get to add jack of all trades to this. Okay, so charisma modifier plus half proficiency. So I'm going to yeah. add six to it. Okay. And I need to get 18. Correct. So I need to get at least a 12. Yeah. That's an 18 on the die. So. All right. So you dispel, dispel the area it. of the spell. Nicely done. Woo. Woo. Okay. Uh, I think that's kind of all I got, because that's the action. Um, I could just be imagining that kind of, that, you know, that one moment of clarity where you're just like, not like this. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah. I'm going to say our lives are a meaningless charade, but they don't end this way. Uh, and that is the end of my turn. Okay. Well, the doctor, um, the doctor replies and says, Oh, but there are so many more horrors that await you. Um, and he's going to use his fight or flight response again um, oh, no. to teleport out of the grip <laughs> uh, and over here. Um, and then um, he is going to cast a new spell. Uh, this is a fun one. This is one that we haven't seen used against player characters before. But I've a bit on the receiving end of this as a DM a few times. It's called Pestilence. Uh, you can each Stop. <laughs> um, so each each of the three of you can make a constitution saving throw against this magical disease. Oh, I'm immune to disease. Oh, and he's not a plague doctor. So he, he doesn't get around that. So you're, you're just I'm not go. even going to roll. Yeah. I'm a monk. Monks Whoa. aren't Sorry. bad. <laughs> Do people think monks are bad? Why are they wrong? Oh, oh, Ginny. Let, let, let's, 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 let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. Okay. Uh, twenty six. Oh my God! Is there any possible reason on the planet that I would have advantage on this roll? Do you have a way of giving yourself advantage? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got a one. Okay. <laughs> At the start of each of your turns, you take 3d6 necrotic damage and gain okay. one level of exhaustion. Ugh. And then you can save to get, get rid of it. Or we kill the doctor! <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, so that is Pestilence. Not terribly effective when... Um, oh, okay. In your case... Uh, um, I Actually, I got the spell wrong. This is me reading my own spells. So you roll the save at the start of your turn. Um, not now, when I cast the spell. Because you have to save three times for the spell to end. Oh. Ooh. If, Ooh. You, if you don't get... Sorry. Yeah, you have to make three successful saves for Pestilence to be over. So, you've got one successful save and one failed save, basically. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll keep track of it, don't worry. Okay. You'll just have to be making saves unless you break his oh, concentration. I'm worried. <laughs> yeah. Yellow Jacket, it is your turn. Um, the, the spell has no effect on me, but I see it affect my two friends. And so I run 
And I'm going to, hold on, I'm just going to pile as many cool abilities from my new subclass as I can in here. So Serpent Style. Um, nope, not Serpent Style. That just makes me allowed to use pole arms. Serpent Spring. While wielding a spear, pole arm, or quarterstaff, when you expend a key point to use your Step of the Wind feature, your jump distance is tripled for the turn, and you end your movement adjacent to a creature, you gain advantage on the first attack roll you make. So I stick my glaive into this table, propel myself into the air, landing behind the doctor, gaining advantage on my first attack. Um, I'm going to... So that's a key point. This is gonna this is gonna kill my key points. I'm going to use another two key points to assume again. I wanted to use other stances, but I just gotta go with the black mamba stance. It's the most useful in this instance. They're giving me three attacks. And I'm going to just wail on the doctor. Uh, so attack number one with advantage is going to be a uh, 23 to hit. Okay. Do you want to resolve all the hits, then all the damage, please? Sure. Um, next attack, not with advantage, is only going to be a 12. Not a hit. No, uh, he's a able to sidestep that one. After the first blow, he reels backwards and is able to dodge the, the, uh, the second one. All right. Third attack. Uh, 17 to hit? Right on the money. All right. Right uh, on the nose, I... perhaps? Maybe you get him right in the nose with, like, the butt of the polearm? Yeah. Oh, is his glasses shatter? Should I also roll my... Un should we s resolve those two first before I do my unarmored or unarmed strikes? Yeah, yeah, resolve those. Yeah. All right, so the first two, I'm going to... Um, so that's going to be... Uh, 28 damage. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm actually going to use another... Okay, so we're at 26, but I'm going to use another two key points. I'm now out of key points, so I can't do Flurry of Blows, but uh, to add another nine damage to that, so 26... Uh, 35 more damage. So 28, one hit for 28, one hit for 35? Yeah. Okay. And then I'm going to use my bonus action to take a single on our, as I, as I use, I stick my glaive in the ground and I roundhouse kick him in the face, uh, getting only a, uh, uh, 13. So he dodges the roundhouse kick. Still a respectable amount of damage, leaving him bloodied. With that, we go to the top of the round, round um, with um, uh, with uh, Scarlet Fury. Again, you hear the music do 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 as I run towards <laughs> dog, the doctor. Um, do I have to make a save at this another save at the start of my turn? Uh, you did. We're gonna count that as the save that you would have had to make. So you oh, okay. succeeded your first save. Yeah. On this one, okay. Um, and I am going to recklessly attack. Nice. With the chair from the table that I pick up on the way <laughs> to the doctor. So I grab the chair as my new improvised weapon and I come at him straight forward. Oh, and you know what? It doesn't matter for the spell because I failed my concentration check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yay! Monks saving the day. I'm just going to keep promoting monks this episode. <laughs> All right, so that is um, 28 to hit with the chair. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, the chair. Oh, and that is um, 19 damage. Oh, <laughs> not the face. <laughs> and then uh, second one, recklessly attacking again. That is 17 to hit. Right on the, uh, r r uh, so is this now with the legs of the chair? Because I yes. assume, yeah. <laughs> I assume it broke. Yeah. <sighs> um, and 
I got 20 damage on that one. And then I grapple him again. Okay. You know that? You know when you see like that wrestling move where someone gets the chair and they're like standing woozily, barely on their on their feet? That's the doctor right now. Um he's bloodied and just lost concentration on 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 his magic. Blue streak, it is your turn. Okay. Um I would like to cast Polymorph on the doctor. <laughs> yes. Uh, he needs to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 16. I get a natural one. <laughs> Excellent. Then I don't have to use one of my fours. Uh, I am turning him into a rat. And then I would like to, I'd like to run over and, and, and you know, grab him from your hands if you will allow me. <laughs> Can I un- yeah, because because he would have turned her into a, a rat in your hands. So yes, okay. <laughs> no, where where are we going with this? Where are we going with so this blue streak? There are like barrels and and like you know stuff around this room, right? Yes. Is there like a a container that I could open? Um. Yes. There's there's barrels. There's satchels. There's his doctor's bag. I would are, like are you- to. Are you looking I for- want to just put the rat into a barrel and close the lid so that it's trapped. Sure. You, are you looking for a barrel with any sort of particular substance in it, or does that not matter to you? Well, I don't want it to drown. I just okay. want it to be stuck. Okay. Um, yeah, you can uh, put the rat in uh, in the barrel that is uh, right at the, the top of the room there and close it in. I hand it uh, to you. I, I, I'm just going to take the rat over to the barrel and, and stash him in there and uh, put, you know, uh, put is there's what am I standing on? Just just junk. Put yeah. junk on top of the barrel. <laughs> I'll grab a sack and put it on for yeah. you. Uh, I think maybe we could just leave now, right? Quickly? <laughs> yes. And And I actually, I walk up to the barrel and I tap on it a bit and I go, when you get out of there eventually, tell everyone that the Octonwald Irregulars are not to be messed with. And then I gather my friends. Can we, yeah? Can we just get out of here, you think? I'm sure that it will be just as easy as getting in. That, but that wasn't, I mean, okay. Um, you can- Go up the well? Um, as, as the situation comes to, the rest of the Irregulars, um, kind of come to their senses again and uh, oh, green thumbs. and and they want to ch- yeah i was just gonna say they want to check on green thumbs <laughs> can we give him a potion i i give him one of my potions he he gets up and he's like he sees uh he he sees you yellow jack and he's like you came good lad it was my duty now i owe you one Let's well, get out of here. Technically, you saved me before, and now I've saved you. We're even, but you know, you will figure it out. <laughs> um, I'm going to come out of my rage. Okay. And I'm going to use my feature um, that, where is this? Um, I think I can gain hit points coming out of my rage. Yes, you regain hit points when you finish your rage. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can. So whenever I enter a rage or willingly end it, I can expend hit dice and regain hit points as if I've finished a short rest. So I'm going to nice. do that. I can cast, uh, if everybody gets close to me, I can cast Aura of Vitality. Nice. And every round I can heal one person 2d6. So depending on how many rounds we want to just kind of chill here. I, I mean, it's not a, oh, it is concentration. So I actually don't want to do that because that'll drop the polymorph. So never mind. I can't okay. do that. Sorry. Take some potions. All righty. <laughs> you distribute the potions around the rest of the irregulars who who heal themselves up. And Purple Prose, um, the demolitions expert, she says, I happen to notice that this, that she points over here and says, that's the, this is the lowest level of the tower. It's relatively structurally sound, but uh, I think that there's an armory over here where they're keeping some explosives. Oh. Purple oh, prose. Oh no! Go ahead. Go ahead. 
should we see what's in the doctor's bag? He seemed like there was something in there. Yes. Yeah. 100%. But yes to the explosives. Thumbs up. Explosives. Looking in the doctor's bag, contained in a, in a sealed glass vial is a delirium crystal and several spell components for contaminated spells and exhaustive notes of all the horrific plans that this doctor was planning to do with the remains of your friends. Yeah, no, let's blow everything up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll take the doctor's bag over my shoulder and um, he won't be needing this anymore. And um, I, I turn to Purple Prose and I say, do you think you can create an exit for us, Purple? Give me five minutes. And um, she produces a, a, a keg of, of, of powder um, and says, who'd like to do, um, sets it up at the base of the, the wall, says, who's like to... J I think she says, I think we might be below the water line in here, so we're going to have to rush out as quickly as we can. You ready for it? Always. Wait. Should we put the rat right by the explosion? Hmm. That's a good idea. Because <laughs> then it'll just carry, you know, once the rat's dead, it'll just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Then he won't have to, then he can't tell people that the Octa Walder regulars aren't to be messed with, but I suppose we were going to kill him anyway. Mm. That's true. Plus, they should already know. Well, yes. We can yell it on the way out. <laughs> yeah. As you. I will. Okay. Well, you set up the explosives, and Purple Prose says, ah, it's like the Toddsfeld Dam all over again. At, who'd like to do the honors this time? Well, seeing as um, the Red Huntsman isn't here to pull the trigger, I suppose one of us will have to. Uh, me! I'll do it! Me! <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scarlet. I light said thing. <laughs> what as, I don't know what I'm lighting. <laughs> as you stand back, the explosion rings out across the bottom of the tower blasting a hole that's open to the lake and w as water begins flowing in purple pro says now let's get out while they're distracted before the tower collapses you swim out through the waters as the tower crumbles behind you the confusion of the chromatic talons as the tower collapses and you swim across the lake to the other side to make your escape. That's why you don't mess with the Octonwald Irregulars. <laughs> I, I yell that as, as I reach the tree line. I'm like, you do not mess with the Octonwald Irregulars. And then we run into the tree line. The uh, How many of us are there? One, two. Seven? Seven. Yeah, seven. Huh. Let's go back to my bar quick. I owe you all drinks. <laughs> <laughs> And we all run back to uh, Scarlet Fury's bar. Where wonderful drinks are had by all. Cheers. Y'all made very good time. Um, that is all I have for us this evening. So we'll, we'll wrap up a little bit early there. That's always nice to do that. But well done. As you I share mean, your drinks in uh, back in um, Scarlet Fury's bar. It's... Uh, well, uh, on a mission well done. Uh, yeah, another... Blue Streak is going to give some truly depressing toasts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, Blue Streak, you're quite famous for your great and cheerful toasts after a successful mission. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Soon, we will join the Irregulars who have already escaped this mortal coil to finally sleep in the cold earth. But until then, you know, ale is comforting. <laughs> I feel like there's like this weird Hi. silence. The irregulars haven't been together in a while, and uh, they're just. I'm, but yeah, Scarlet go, Scarlet throws up her hand, and the rest of us are like, yeah. <laughs> 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 
Uh, I'll, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> Ale is comforting. <laughs> well, uh, what a lot of fun. So... Um, with a bit of extra time, do we want to talk? Like, we, we use some new subclasses. We use some new spells. Uh, do we want to do, like, a how, how did it go? Yeah, do we want to go around and say, um, maybe, let's do one round. Everyone say, like, cool takeaway of the subclass that you played. Like, what was one, what, what was the one thing that you thought was really cool? And then we'll do, like, a compliment sam- sandwich thing. Go around, like, what was the thing that was, like, confusing or broken or or what have you and then we'll wrap it up with like maybe thinking about any other comment you want to want to give sure Ginny is our guest do you want to kick it off oh god okay well i will definitely say that my favorite thing was the prophetic foresight feature i in one of my games i play with a wizard who has uh whatever the wizard kind of like that yeah important yeah. thing is and i'm always like oh that's so cool so uh this was like a great i feel like this was a great sort of like dark and spooky variant on that same side of concept and i really liked it um i was annoyed that the doctor was only making us roll saves instead of rolling attacks because i was like i had all these fours left to <laughs> sling at him uh but no that was great uh, i think it was very useful when i did get to use it um honestly i think my only like my only sad thing is just that Dreadful Words is such a cool feature, but it takes up a bardic inspiration. And like, mm. you know, even at level 12, you only have four, right? Bardic inspirations. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess you get them back on a short rest. So it isn't it isn't your guys' fault that I was just slinging them around. Yeah, I, I, I guess we're, we're trying to... A lot of bard subclasses give you another way to use your bardic, bardic inspiration. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. Yeah, I, I think I probably just shouldn't have used it so much in the traditional mm. way, knowing that I had the opportunity to use it in a cool way, you know? I- interesting. But I also feel like often in one shots, I don't use enough of my stuff because I'm like saving yeah. it. So I was trying to get them out there. I, I, And, you know, we didn't really get a ton of opportunity to like negotiate or anything. So I didn't get to use like the end is nigh, which is a really cool feature. That just it just gives me it makes me real good at intimidation. That's yeah. what I should have done to that poor water boy. <laughs> <laughs> but we won't discuss him. No, better oh, swept yeah. under the rug. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. my feedback. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. Uh, actually, gives some really good food food for thought. Really, really good food for thought. Thank you. I also just think this is really fun. Like the like the vibe of this class is unlike a lot of bard classes. Because even like, you know, College of Whispers, which is sort of dark and spooky, like it doesn't have, I don't know, I just think the idea of like reveling in fear and despair and like instilling fear is a mm. very unique bard concept that I love. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. You, you really took to it. And I just love the way you played the character. Like... It was so cool just to see it's it's not it, it can be such a challenge in a one shot to like make the angle of the character come, come out and you really pulled it off. Uh death and despair. <laughs> <laughs> um Jill, what about you? Yeah. Yeah. Um so I I have always wanted to play a barbarian where I just get to smash into people and take random things and smash, you know, thinking about instead of just building my character around like one weapon that does the damage, but being the weapon. And I feel like I really got to do that with yeah. this barbarian, um, you know, with, I wish I had, you know, taken up, you know, other people around me more, but I'm glad at least with the doctor, I got to swing him around a bit. And then the, the typical move with the, you know, wrestling in the chair. So mm-hmm. that was really fun. Um, so having all these pieces that kind of come together to make it while raging or not raging where, I get to do the type of di- like moves that I want to do to still do great damage. Like that D12 on everything is just like, ah, yes. Mm-hmm. Because I think that's a lot of the times people don't take the things around them and use the space because it's not going to give as much damage. Whereas here yeah. it does. And I love that. I love how you just going to be creative with the whole space that you're in. I definitely noticed that it took, took a moment for that to like, I feel like in a in a longer if you got a, the chance to play the character a couple of times that would really sink in because yeah kind of the the conceptual idea with the path of the old gods barbarian is on paper it's like 
all your weapons deal d12 damage but where kelly and i are coming from from a design standpoint is well barbarians use great axes which do d12s anyways Mm -hmm. so you're not doing any more damage than you could if you just used a great axe you're just able to do that good damage while also being able to throw people around grab them and pick them up and do all that fun stuff that yeah because we've played with a lot of barbarian players that are just like oh i should just hit it with my axe yeah instead of doing all the other cool physical things that we we want we want to see barbarians do yeah and you don't have to choose between like doing that damage with your axe per se and doing the cool thing like the cool thing does the damage of the axe so that's yeah. great it still adds to like the damage that you do and still wanting mm. to do that with the flavor of the story and the imagery that that brings in all angles so i feel like if that's a really unique piece that um sometimes we think like what is it that i can do to do damage well how does it integrate with the story this subclass like does that and i love it um there's always that flavor like i'm like if i were to continue with this i'd be like where can i throw people off walls and and bash people together and you know i didn't get to you know um what was it is if i choose to kill people brutally by tearing off limbs or savaging the enemy i'm like i didn't get to that point but that would have been some good imagery Mm. too sorry for taking the doctor away from you (laughs) it's okay you're so close. <laughs> um, so I would further go even even more with that and build it up. Mm. Um, the only thing I would say is I had to really think about, and I have them all here, it's just all my abilities, but what's not enraging, what is enraging, and I had to be mindful of like what can I do while I'm raging and not, but that's pretty typical, I feel like, um, within that space. But other than that, I got to smash all the things, and nice. I love that. Kelly. Um, so I played the Wave the Serpent monk, uh, a monk that is geared towards being a damage dealer monk that uses pole arms, and I gotta say it delivered. Um, now mind you, uh, just a note for those who were watching, Monty did let us choose magic items, and I chose the Serpent's Fang, which Monty allowed to be a glaive, which did add an additional 1d10 poison damage to all of my attacks. Mm. That being said, I at first i was like am i doing too much damage with this character but when you compare it to something like a top tier paladin who also is taking great weapon master a fighter who's dealing at level 12 how many attacks do fighters get are they at there honestly as a dm yeah you felt similar and as a 12th level character it really didn't feel like anything more than what joe can do as pluto jackson in our in our main game and he's got like a flame tongue sword yeah so, fair so it, it it felt like it was hitting in a in a pretty similar similar way um, i i think so yeah and i i, I like did sharpshooter like yeah. when bayo does that kind of damage too it felt really yeah. similar and and that was the goal intent that was the design intent with the way of the serpent and also i mean like i did use all of my key points in both of those combats yeah, i wonder if we're gonna have to really look at how fast the subclass burns through the key points well the thing the thing to note is i used them the way i wanted to use them i was quite liberal with my use of them and it's not like we we probably would have tried to have a short rest after this combat encounter yeah Yeah. and i would have gotten them back so Mm -hmm. i actually think it might be working the one thing to note is there are multiple serpent stances i could have picked i did pick the same one twice because having three attacks just felt more useful than the other options. But I'm wondering if that's just because of the, I, we were in closed quarters. So yeah. having so just to let the ch- uh, the people watching know, the other stances would have allowed me to increase my reach by 10 feet, which would have been really helpful if we were fighting like ranged combatants that I was having a hard time getting to. Um, the coaddle stance would have gained me a flying speed where there was a tactic where for to, for infiltrating, I could have flown over the walls or just been a flying monk. But interior battles, it didn't really yeah. suit it. Also, the coaddle <laughs> stance can be used outside of combat for great effect. And the mirrorless stance would have given me three reactions per round, yeah. which if there were enemies running towards us from like one direction, I probably would have adopted that stance because I can also spend key points to attack them when they enter my range. 
I guess the question is, have we written ourselves into the corner with the Black Mamba stance and is just getting an extra attack too good? And should we maybe reconsider even having that be the effect of the stance? Uh, that's, that's that's my question. That's, that is the only question yeah. that I have. Because um, I would love to see... I think we should wait till full playtest happens. Because yeah. again, in the scenarios I found myself in, having three attacks was just the best option. But I can see a case for flying, having more, um, having more uh, reactions, or increasing my reach. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm interested to see how it plays in uh, yeah. in full play testing. Well, that was a lot of fun to say the least. Um, I, I I really really enjoyed seeing all these characters do their very very potent things uh i think that plague wind i might need to look at the wording of it um <laughs> and maybe just it may maybe it, it's it, it maybe is it a concentration spell no it's not i it might need to it be. might need to be that i think that we need to look at how that auto kill 25 damage area works after the plague wind goes down um because it get anybody with it no but it doesn't do any damage right like after the initial blast of damage it's just if you end your turn in the area you're dead Mm. so and you have less than 25 hit points so that's it's i like that it forces you as a player to be like oh i need to get out now but i dead or zero hit points no it's dead it's like flat out dead so maybe maybe that would be a way to to soften it is make it if you're if you have less than 25 hit points and you're in the area at the end of your turn zero yeah yeah that makes sense because then at least people can attempt to like get people out yeah yeah um well um we're we we've got a little bit uh we're a little bit quick tonight but in any case I just want to say uh, that's that's our game tonight. We had a wonderful play with our incredible guest, Jenny D. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it really was a pleasure to play with you. Uh, and on- honestly, I-, I have to say, like, how you had some of the, the coolest strategies yeah. with your bard tonight. Like, I haven't had a player play a spellcaster so proficiently in this way oh, oh, oh. <laughs> uh, in a in a while L- like like oh oh man like like h- how much of a min maxer are you actually underneath that no L- like <laughs> zero like zero and i also feel like i just kept screwing up tonight like i kept feeling like every single thing that i did was not everything but like one out of every three things i was like oh that was the wrong thing like, i no. feel like i do it immediately no jenny oh. G- for the record i play a spellcaster in in our regular game and if you thought you screwed up tonight uh my character is uh internet famous uh for <laughs> for screwing up it's it's the, he has a famous Incident. line yeah the, literally one of his famous lines that uh floats around on the internet is there's been an incident yeah. and it's always me i'm always the incident so yeah, yeah uh of course monty's never seen a spellcaster as proficient because i play the spellcasters no. <laughs> and i just blow things up and and you make know, things so much worse you know what it was it was we haven't seen someone play battlefield control spellcaster and you really played that battlefield control support caster and we ha- we haven't had that in our games in a long time and i was like wow i forgot how good it was to do like the support battlefield control stuff because kelly yeah. kelly blows things up <laughs> I, think that's, I mean i guess that's like part of it is i feel like my the majority of my spellcaster experience is as like a support character who yeah. is just trying to do things that help everybody else deal the damage and so that is sort of like what I'm more comfortable with. I have yeah. never played a spellcaster that like has fireball or anything, you know, I've never been the spellcaster <laughs> that messes stuff up. So this was, but yeah. I, I mean, it was really fun. I love bards and I don't, I've never gotten to play a bard in like an ongoing game. So I always just kind of jump on them in mm. one shot opportunities. It's like my only chance. <laughs> Good stuff. Can you, for, for, for those who watch our channel normally, can you tell everybody where they can find all your amazing content? 
Sure. Um, I am primarily a YouTube person. You can find me at youtube.com slash Jenny D, not just the, well, it's all very confusing how everything is spelled because it's Jenny G-I-N-N-Y and then it's D D I, not just the letter. I don't know. I just made it all very confusing, uh, but you can find me there on YouTube um, that way. And then also I'm, you know, all the other places, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, awesome. reluctantly, et cetera. Gets, gets TikTok stuck. reluctantly, <laughs> TikTok reluctantly, oh, etc. It's the worst. <laughs> and a big thank you as well to Jill and Kelly for for playing uh, along tonight as, as well. Uh, such such a fun band uh, to run this game game for. How good are monks, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're great. All right, like, uh, we're gonna need to have this conversation after. <laughs> you know, okay, there there is a thing like both Monty and I have some issues with the monk, but I have far less issues. I actually really mm-hmm. like them. I just uh, if you we we just the quick version of it is we recently did uh, like a a breakdown of each class by party role, and each class like fit into a lot of party roles. And monk, it was like. They're kind of middle ground in everything, which makes them the helper in a lot of categories. But I couldn't tell you which party role they specifically fill. And even when I play one, I'm like, so, I mean, tonight was the exception. But when I played one, I'm like, I don't feel like the best damage dealer. I don't feel like the best stealth. I don't feel like the best anything. I'm just kind of like good at everything. It's a really weird class. The but versatility to it. There yeah, is versatility. Valuable. That yeah. is what yeah. I like about it. And tonight, though, the the goal with this monk, which I'm very happy about because I wanted the monk, I felt like a monk should be able to grab a glaive and be a damage dealer. And I'm just like, I don't know, Monty, did you think that the monk was pretty cool tonight? Did I you? thought the monk was pretty cool tonight. I thought the monk That's was the pretty first pretty time cool Monty tonight. will say yeah. those words out yeah. loud. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <You> did it. <laughs> indeed, indeed. And, and so, um, of course, all these subclasses that we tried tonight are in uh, our new book, Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, which is live on Kickstarter for another little more than a day, 24 hours, if you're watching yeah. the stream. And for those of you that are watching this upload to YouTube, uh, it might it might be over by the time this hits YouTube. We'll, we'll try to get this to YouTube as, as soon as we can. Um, but... Um, Please do check it out. You can head over to Kickstarter or Drakenheim.com to take to the Kickstarter page. Get in on the campaign before we close. We are heading. We are rocketing towards our very final stretch goal. Uh, we have come so far already, and we are just so grateful to everyone that has backed the project so far. Kelly and I will be live streaming again tomorrow to show off some more things from the book, answer some more questions, and to celebrate uh, another amazing Kickstarter project because. This is our our second big Kickstarter project after Dungeons of Drakenheim. It's so amazing to have such an amazing community supporting our work in this way. So a big thank you to everyone who watched tonight and who has backed the campaign. So thank you. Yes. Um, obviously, like check out our Kickstarter. If you don't know, we also have a YouTube channel to check out. We also have our Dungeons of Drakenheim live stream campaign, which airs every Tuesday evening on this Twitch channel that you are currently watching on. Uh, that's twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. Uh, this might end up being part of the canon of the greater story of Drakenheim. Um, I don't know if Ginny knows this, but we were playing one of the, we were playing a bunch of backstory characters from one of our main characters played by Jill's story. She was uh, in the military and she was a member of the Octonwald Irregulars and we've been hinting at them for She's a the long Red time. Hunter. Yeah, so. Oh, and well, so, that didn't show up. Yeah, so we are her friends from back in the military days. And I think that that's really exciting. Mm. So if you liked the vibes tonight and you want to see more, check out our live stream. It's uh, All the episodes are on YouTube. It airs every Tuesday. And uh, we're going to keep going for a little while with that as well. As well, tonight we used some um, really cool assets in in our game tonight. Um, the um, the maps were created by me um, in Dungeon Draft, but they were inspired uh, by a real world castle that, uh, for mm-hmm. those of you that want uh, want your fun fact, 
it is actually the cat the castle that sunk into a swamp in monty python's uh oh, okay. um uh, um holy grail um so that is the real world castle that actually inspired the layout of the map tonight um and i used assets uh from venatus maps as well as two minute tabletop um in uh, creating these maps that were put together using also assets that are part of the dungeon draft packet so if you're wondering where all those cool assets and all those cool stuff came from that's where I where I got them. A big thank you to those creators who very graciously have given us permission to use those assets in our in our live stream campaigns. So please check them out. They've got amazing Patreon pages where you can get all those assets loaded up in your own uh, in your own stuff as well. With that, um, we also have all of our YouTube content too. Check us out there. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you next time as we tell more when we tell the next untold tale of Drakenheim. Good night.